Hello and welcome to the Simple Game Dev. This is episode 8 of our Simple Game Tutorial, or Simple Mobile Game Tutorial. I think I keep changing the name of this tutorial every time I uh, make a new episode. But, anyways, in our last episode, we left off with our uh, vegetables and bombs. Um, what's the name of these things? Uh, I forgot. Uh, yeah, our prefabs. Sorry about that. And I believe I forgot to make all of them uh, is trigger. And you have to make sure they are all set to is trigger bool. Otherwise, you might you will find errors. So I went ahead and did that beforehand. But if you haven't, just uh, make sure they're all set to is trigger. So I'm just going to get rid of these guys for now, since they're already prefabs, they're saved. So right now the scene looks pretty sad. So let's change that. I'm going to add the level. So we're going to do some basic level design, if you want to call it. So let's go to our bumps and veggies uh, folder. And inside the prefabs folder, you will find one prefab that contains two models inside uh, that make up our level, our basic level. So just drag and drop it into our scene. And as you can see, it looks way better now, right? So let's start by adding some props. Go to our Bumps and Veggies prefabs folder and drag and drop box one and box two so sometimes when you're making games you have a very limited amount of assets and you have to reuse them a lot so that's uh, kind of the purpose of this video maybe just uh, to show you how sometimes with just a little bit of of uh, object you can create an environment that looks pretty decent because sometimes in games uh, I guess most of the times in games uh, you don't have the resources to have like every little detail be different right so I'm gonna show you how to make this trick make it look like it it's actually a different level made with different things so I'm gonna show you again the final version I'm gonna drag this uh, scene here And as you can see, with a couple of tricks, dirty tricks, uh, you can make it look way more interesting than it looks right now. Like uh, in this case, I scale down and up those crates, those boxes, I mean. Uh, I put some lighting, uh, some nice shadows. So you, there's a lot of cool things that you can do to make your games look a bit more alive, I guess even if you don't have that many assets. So let's start by doing that. Now, since this might be a boring process, I'm just gonna do a quick one and I'm gonna speed up the video for you guys. So yeah, I'll see you when this is done. Um, don't worry, you don't have to follow along. Uh, you can you feel free to put the boxes wherever you want them. Okay, so. Okay, it seems like this is good enough for now. Uh, the next thing we want to do is play a little bit with the lights. Because right now it's so sad that th there's only this uh, directional light. And yeah, it looks decent enough. But if you want this game to look better, you have to spend some time on the lights. So we're gonna do, uh, again, a quick, a very quick um, array of lights. And in order to do that, let's create an empty game object that will hold the lights of our scene. And actually, let me create another one called boxes. Because if you take a look at our hierarchy in the level, um, we might end up with 
I don't know hundreds of things and it might be a pain to search for the ones you're looking for so the best thing is to just parent things uh, and keep everything organized so let's start with adding a light uh, I'm gonna start with probably a point light so depending on the story of your game of course because that's very important when uh, doing some level design right it's not just placing things at random points you have to think about the story sometimes yeah it, it might sound uh, weird or, or uh, like I'm uh, exaggerating but no you actually have to think about all these things right so let's say in our case this uh, bombs and veggies factory uh, it's run by humans obviously right so humans sleep at night and that's when these bunnies uh, started, uh, you know, they, they broke into this place to steal the vegetables. That's, that's our story. So that will place our setting, of course, at night, right? So what we want to do is create that night look. So let's grab this point light. And since I'm selecting all of them and they share the same uh, parameters, we can just change the color of all of them at the same time and not just the color you can play with the intensity like this well it might be too much right it's it's not like a bar or anything so just a hint of uh, blue maybe and let's lower down in the intensity uh, what I also want to change is the actual range of this uh, the range is uh, this sphere or radius of action of each light if you uh, Slide it up or down you see how the radius uh, changes and you can see the Immediate effect that it has on your level, right? So let's go with something very simple and subtle maybe just to make sure that's a a night time, right? Maybe there's a skylight, something. Oh no, there's no skylight, so that's it. That's it for those blue lights. Now I'm going to add another light in this case. Uh, we're going with a directional light, because that's going to be our main light and the one that will actually uh, will be casting shadows. And again, I'll try to go with a bluish tint, but not as, as uh, dark as the other one. And also, I don't want it to be that bright, maybe 0.25. And shadow type, I want it to be hard shadows for now. And as you can see, shadows appear as soon as I click on that. So depending on the camera angle, of course, that's where you want your shadows to be. Uh, let's say we want the game to have the main view of, of the, you know, the main menu from uh, something like this angle, right? So it makes sense the light uh, coming from those windows will be pointing towards the camera, right? So if the camera is, po is uh, placed here, then the light is naturally coming from outside and maybe some angle, uh, you can change it like here. Oh, also, when uh, doing level design in Unity, uh, yeah, it took me a while to get used to it because I the first time I learned level design was with uh, Unreal. And now it's just, uh, I don't know, Unreal level design was, I guess, more intuitive for me. It's just a personal opinion. Uh, so yeah, if you want to switch from perspective mode to isometric, which is sometimes easier and more intuitive when you're when you're moving things around or, or uh, planning out your levels uh, yeah that's this is the icon that you want to click and see how it changes from perspective to um, isometric so yeah let's continue with lights um, I think I leave the lights like that and lastly maybe the guard left some lights uh, on maybe he forgot I don't know and also to 
uh, how can I call this? Okay, let me do it first and then I'm gonna explain it. So let's going to add a spotlight. And now that's another type of light that Unity has, which behaves in a different way. Uh, this one has like a cone of action. And that's pretty cool because if you select one light, uh, any light, you immediately see the the way it behaves, right? Like point light is just like a sphere uh, that has a radius of action. Um, the directional light is basically an infinite infinite uh, light that is casted uh, from one point, or I guess infinite points, uh, with one uh, direction. And that's it. It doesn't matter really where you put directional lights in Unity because they behave the same way, right? So it doesn't matter if you put it all the way here or under your level, it behaves exactly the same. While the other lights, they actually uh, care where they are placed in the level, as you can see it here. So that's another thing. Uh, going back to our spotlight, maybe our factory has this uh, big uh, spotlight in the center and it also works for us as uh, designers to make sure the player uh, focus point uh, will be this area because uh, the middle area is where the boxes are going to be opening, right? So let's make this uh, not as subtle. Let's uh, turn off, uh, sorry, turn up our range, maybe 30 and change uh, the angle and the intensity a little bit down. I don't know, maybe the color as well, uh, depending what we want. But I think something like that will, will be enough hint for the player, right? And now going back to our FBX file, uh, FBX folder, let's grab the conveyor belt, drag and drop it and put it exactly at zero, that's where it is. And with this in place, we can keep playing with our lights, make sure it has the effect that we want. Also, let's place this uh, light, let's position it perfectly in the center. And why I'm gonna put it at maybe 10, I'm gonna move the angle. So, I don't know, something like that. So it's a subtle hint, but players notice it. And if not, you can always turn the, uh, move the intensity a little bit up. That's it. So it's looking way better now, right? Before it was just an empty stage with nothing else. So let's move. Uh, actually, let me check how much time it's been. Okay, it's been 16 minutes. Uh, Maybe I should cut this video uh, now and we will continue working with our conveyor belt on the next video to keep things organized, simple and quick. Uh, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.